What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Week 8 here and we are taking on a team that has three subscriber players on it. That is right, the San Juan Tigers in the NFC South. I went into the Tigers depth chart and quadruple checked that all you guys were reordered and correctly placed in the proper order in the depth chart and the proper formation subs because going back and looking at some of the Tigers games, these subscribers haven't been getting involved. So I hopefully look to see you know, you guys highlighted in this game and really, really looking to see you guys in action. But before we dive into the San Juan Tigers roster, we got more subscriber players joining the league. That is right. The SFL continues to grow. And if you guys don't know what's going on here, go back and watch episode one, because if you want to join, all you got to do is comment down below and I can add you into the SFL and you can see your created players just like we're about to showcase here today. And if we play them with our team, you'll get to see yourself live in action. So we added two players today, a quarterback and a running back, added them both to the same team, which makes the most sense because this team, the Salt Lake City Bisons uh, in the AFC West, formerly the Kansas City Chiefs, they needed a quarterback and they also needed a running back as well. Plus, we play them in week 14, so we're going to get to see two subscribers on the same team, which is always fun. But taking a look here at the new quarterback in town here, playing above Sam Howell, which doesn't really take much to do, but it is Mason Buchanan, 79 rated overall quarterback here in Salt Lake City, six foot, 180 pounds, 23 year old rookie out of Michigan State, the Spartan, and he is definitely a scrambling type of archetype player look at that throw on the run at 95 also very accurate in the short game as well to go along with 94 speed mason here looks like he could be a problem and when we play him in week 14 i wouldn't be surprised if he carves us up through the air or maybe even on the ground and then we also got running back here nico pd made sense to add him to this team because elijah mitchell is their number one not even really a number one anyways, but on top of that, he's injured. So Nico here should get all the snaps in Salt Lake City. Shout out to at PD underscore swag in the comments. Nico here is six foot tall, 195 pounds, 22 years old out of the University of Colorado. And he's pretty well-rounded, definitely more of an elusive back. He's got 94 speed to go along with 92 agility and that 92 carrying should ensure that he does not fumble the ball too too much so welcome to the league guys and again if you would like to join the sfl comment down below there will be a pinned comment with all the necessary information and you guys can join as well having a ton of fun with this series and uh the views seem to be pretty good so i'm assuming that you guys are as well now taking on the two and four San Juan Tigers here. We got three uh, subscriber players on this team here. So let's just kind of take a look at them and see what we are up against today. So they got Tua as their quarterback. So he's developing pretty well. Superstar player here on this team. And Josh Jacobs, very good running back. Super excited to see him in Green Bay next year. I think he's going to do really, really well there and then wide receiver they got devonta smith and christian watson but nick stoyer subscriber player out of ohio state is going to be the slot guy the third option and he's pretty good he's got a couple touchdowns on the season 75 rated overall six foot one a buck 85 will nick get involved today and get some crucial catches that is the question and then tight end saint james another subscriber interesting story i had to go in here and make dalton kincaid like three overall lower because St. James was number one on the depth chart, but just week after week, they were not getting this man any receptions. So I pretty much went in there, had my hand in it, and now hopefully we should see St. James on the field at all times. Because he looks pretty good, six foot two, 220, and he's got decent speed, decent route running, but can also block pretty good as well. So looking to see a lot of St. James on the field here today. Another Ohio State Buckeye here on the offensive line, Taylor Decker, been doing it for a long time at a high level. Cody Whitehair and Coleman Shelton, and then they also got Elijah Vera Tucker, but he's hurt, so that's a huge loss on the right side. 
Darnell Wright, rookie with a ton of upside, should be pretty good in the league. Defensively, they got Emmanuel Ogba, and they got Dietrich Wise as their ends. And then they got Sebastian Joseph Day, Raekwon Davis as their D tackles. Not a great offensive line. Boye Mafi, I mean, kind of mid himself. Nick Bolton, though, very good middle linebacker. And Harold Landry, I mean, good, but definitely... Uh, I think people had a lot more expectations for him. Jamel Dean is their CB number one, but he's hurt. So Nate Hobbs and then a third subscriber, Dior. Love on this team as well. 81 overall, 6'3", 210 out of Mississippi State. Dior is a very fast and can play very good man coverage as well. So maybe Jordan Love, our quarterback, might uh, start to see some picks today. Hopefully not, but easily could. Justin Simmons, he could definitely add to the picks being had by Jordan Love and then Jordan Battle, rookie, strong safety, Tyler Bass and uh, Michael Dixon. So finally, a team here with some good kickers. Get yeah, a quick look at the standings here. I'm going to kind of fly through these. So make sure you watch out for your team if you're on it and you can see how you're doing. So Virginia Beach Blues, us, the Toronto Thunderbirds, Houston Voyagers, and the Vancouver Huskies, Louisville Desperados, and OKC Antlers, all five win teams. We got the Steamers at four and two, Columbus Caps and Albuquerque Armadillos, four and three, as well as the Oakland Wizards, Honolulu Dragons, Chicago Elks, Rio de Janeiro Redwoods, Anchorage Snowhawks, so a lot of four and three teams. The 500 ball clubs here, we got the San Diego Aviators, Memphis River Hogs, Paris Black Knights, and the Austin Lumberjacks. Now, the sub-500 clubs, right now we got the Sacramento Sentinels, the St. Louis Bulls, Melbourne Dreadnoughts, Orlando Orbits, Omaha Pioneers, and Salt Lake City Bisons, who we just showed, all three and four. San Juan Tigers, who we play today, are two and four to go along with the uh, Tokyo Golden Eagles, the Montreal Monarchs, Brooklyn Nighthawks, who are in our division, Dublin Shamrocks on a nice two-game win streak, and the London Mounties. And then the only one-win ball clubs are the Canton Condors and the Houston Oilers. So that is how the SFL stacks up, guys. And again, if you would like to join, please, please comment below. I would be happy to add you. So we got a big one today taking on three subscribers. Not a great team record-wise, but something tells me they will play a little bit better. And this one might be tough for us. So if you guys are fired up for some more SFL content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. At 1,000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway. I'm almost at 800, so please help me get there. I put my whole heart and soul into this content for you guys. And without further ado, let's get down to Thunderbirds Field in Toronto and get ready for the game. And we will get to see Tua Tugavailoa and wide receiver subscriber Nick Stoyer wide receiver subscriber St. James as the offense is going to get the ball first. Going to have to wait to see subscriber corner Dior Love as our defense, our defense will be on the field first. Get a look at Tua. I mean, 1,000 yards, 7-6 for the touchdown interception ratio. I think Jordan Love is almost at 2,000 yards right now. So uh, Tua maybe a little bit behind the pack, I would say. And he will start out in the eye with the fullback. So let's see if this will be a Josh Jacobs give. It's actually not. Wow. Dangerous pass by two of theirs. That one might have been intercepted. Getting a look at our injuries. Yeah, we got a lot. That ain't even all of them. Okay. Let me tell you what. A lot of key guys missing today. That much is for sure. So next man up mentality. Definitely. And let's see this time. It may be a run to Jacobs. No, it won't. We're trying to play good defense and almost... Almost a sack and a pick there. Intended for Christian Watson, but DJ Reed was right there in coverage. Big play here now. Big play. Let's see what Tua does on a third down. We're trying to lock up all these routes, and he threw it at Dalton Kincaid's back. I mean, he hit him in the numbers. <laughs> he, he did hit him in the numbers. Only problem is he hit him in the numbers on his back and not the numbers in the front. And that one probably would have been a first down, too. So... Thank you, Tua. Or who, I don't know, maybe that was Dalton Kincaid on the route. Not 100% sure. But at any rate, it's good for us. And Pat Pete's still going. Okay, just, just go down. Just go down, Pat. Look, you've been around for a while. You've taken some bumps and some bruises. Don't want to see you uh, get too many hits out there. So speaking of Jordan Love, here he is. Yeah, 1966. So almost 2,000 yards and 11 touchdowns to four interceptions. That's a good touchdown interception ratio for sure. But I'll tell you what, the man who has really shined as of late is 
Our running back, Kareem Hunt, who really shouldn't even be playing. Kyron Williams is our back number one, but he got injured, and Kareem Hunt has been stepping up. Oh, nice juke there, cutting it back inside. He's had a couple hundred-plus yard games, doing a good job in the receiving department, and I'm going to try my best to, you know, if this could be the Kareem Hunt show, this could be the Kareem Hunt show. I am here for it. Sign me up. Now, we're going to need a good pull from our left guard here. Let's see if we get just that. We did hit that block beautifully. Kareem Hunt going to get the first down, and Sebastian Joseph Day, the defensive lineman, goes down for the Tigers. Okay, we'll come out shotgun here. Now, finally see love in the passing game. Let's just check it down. I mean, this is just the Kareem Hunt drive, right? Two catches and a run for Kareem Hunt. Making Jordan Love look very good as he is now uh, two receptions for over 20 yards. So you love to see that. Second and two. Smells like play action to me. Smells like a shot. Maybe uh, Olave on the comeback or possibly even Logan. Th it's, it's Thomas. It's Thomas. It's Logan Thomas. He's there. Wasn't really a good pass from Love either. Logan Thomas definitely had to adjust to it. Adjust to it he did. And the Thunderbirds got the ball all the way down to the nine-yard line. So good opening drive for us. We have played very good this season. Olave on press. Eh. I mean, if we were back at like the 20, I might target him. But saw a nice little hole open up there on the left side, actually. So this could be Hunt City. Oh, nice block shed there. Immediate block shed by Emmanuel Agba. He was able to get Kareem Hunt down in the backfield for a loss of one. And I feel good about... A PA rollout only because Olave might get open on this crosser. Let's have Logan Thomas actually block for us as well and just see what happens. Settling for a field goal, not the worst thing in the world. And I was waiting for either Olave or Thomas or so, or not Thomas, Olave or whoever else was out there square to get open. They never did. So that one is unfortunate. But luckily we have Justin Tucker here. Probably the best kicker in NFL history. Going to boot this thing through. So at least we do go up on the scoreboard to start this thing out. We are blitzing, but I'm going to use her on Antoine Winfield just in case. Oh, it's we had. No, no, no. Yaya Diaby had a chance to bring down Josh Jacobs, but he is a superstar X factor in this game. DJ Reed ultimately did. But man, we had. I mean, that was that was punt city. That was punt city coming up there. Yaya Diaby in good position. I mean, li literally just staring at Josh Jacobs, having a conversation with him. Ooh. But Jacobs slips the tackle. That one was a heartbreaker. We're sending some heat there on the right side. So let's see. Oh, he's going to have his tight end open. I called it. Dalton Kincaid. I don't want to see you, Dalton Kincaid. I want to see number 81, who is St. James. Where's he at? I think he's on the sideline out there. Why? Why? Get him on the field, please. Well, it's probably because Tua is coming out in a lot of these uh, empty sets here and shotgun sets. So that might just not be St. James's time to shine. There we go, baby. Gain of three. Could have been a lot worse for the Tigers. I'm blitzing again. I don't care. I'm probably going to go blitz for a lot of this game. Oh, my God. Who was that that caught that? That was a heck, heck of a catch. Got to see. Was that Stoyer? I think it was oh my no it wasn't who was that it's christian watson okay trying to see if i can get uh some good highlights of the subscribers i'm gonna press up and i'm gonna blitz and i'm gonna just hope it's not a run to josh jacobs it's not it's just dalton kincaid seems to be to his favorite target to start this thing out see if it will be jacobs again that is the question it's not It's going to be a play fake, and down goes Tua. It's Leonard Floyd for a big, big sack. I think he might have had somebody open in the end zone as well, so really, really happy. And, yeah, they're definitely going four wide receivers, so we are certainly going to guess pass in this scenario. Of course, why wouldn't we? And maybe we can get home to Tua again. Not 100% sure. No, no. Got a crash on him. And we stuffed him at the one. Wow. So close. About a centipede's freaking short and curly away from crossing that plane. Actually thought he did at first, but I guess, yeah, I guess his back hit the ground first. Now we'll see if they go for it. They are going for it. Not only that, 
But they're coming out shotgun, four wide receivers. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It's got to be Pressure City. It's got to be Pressure City here. Come on, get a pick. Not a pick, but it is a turnover on downs. I can see the logic going for it there on, you know, fourth and in inches from the one yard line. But maybe just take the points. But the only problem is now, <laughs> now we are stuck here on the one yard line. And uh, it's going to be a little tough. Just at this point, just got to kind of get a little bit of breathing room, I would say. I can't even ID up the mic on this one either. Don't like that at all, but whatever. Kareem going to get a safety. Yep. Wow. Okay. Emmanuel Agba, nice play there. I was trying to ID and Kareem Hunt got hurt. So we only have Melvin Gordon as our running back now. And a safety for the Tigers. Yep. May I really wish they would have kicked that field goal. <laughs> Even though that would have been, you know, guaranteed points. Nice coverage on the free kick, but now the Tigers got a chance to take the lead on the scoreboard. And Kareem Hunt won't come back. So we have Melvin Gordon and Kyle Juszczyk. We have, if you have, guys have been actually watching, you know, the gameplay, we've just been decimated by injuries. Like, all key guys, too. Miles Garrett, Kyron Williams, Darren Waller. Like, key guys getting injured. And now Kareem Hunt, who... Stepped in for an injured Kyron Williams and has been playing good. Now he's gone. 3-2. Interesting uh, scoreboard. <laughs> Interesting score there. Yeah, that was unfortunate, man. Uh, getting the ball on the inch yard line like that. And I tried to ID up the mic, but I feel, I don't know. Like, maybe it was me. It, was pr it probably was. It was probably a use or error, but like I couldn't change the mic. And it was pretty much Emmanuel Ogba just free run into the backfield to get Kareem Hunt. But that's okay. As of right now, we are still winning. So if our defense plays good, then we will be okay. The nice catch there by Christian Watson, and he's able to pick up six. Going pressure again here on second and four. Oh, we got we got there. We got there initially, but the nice read there. Nice check down to Josh Jacobs. Thought we might have had sack number two there on Tua, but twas not to be. Let's bring out our 4-3 defense here, but uh, eh, it's audible into zone cover or uh, man coverage as well. And it's going to be Jacobs on the outside. I know it. So we're running with Irvin. Thank God I was usering on him. Josh Jacobs now three rushes for 19 yards. But he is running mean. Got to be really careful for Josh Jacobs. And I'll tell you what, as a Packers fan, which I am through and through, uh, very interesting to see Josh Jacobs next season. I think he's going to be great. Jordan Poyer couldn't really drive him backwards, but he stalled Josh Jacobs enough to limit him to only a gain of a couple. And now third down here, I think that we just lock in on zone coverage, guest pass, shade inside, and just hope that we can get these Tigers off of the field. Where's Tua going to go? He might be rolling out. It's Stoyer, the wide receiver. Wow. Nick Stoyer getting this ball all the way down to the six-yard line. Point for that first down, brother, because you definitely picked up a clutch one. All right, Tigers threatening here. Tigers threatening indeed. See if we can maybe make a good play in the backfield. It is St. James. Okay. First catch of the game. It goes for three. So positive yards. Always good to see. Well, I'll tell you what, though. Our defense did lock in and play good the last time they were in this situation, and that should be a false start. Move that puppy on back five yards. We're going to replay this thing now from the eight. Thank you. I don't know who that was. I skipped you. But whoever you are, I owe you a Christmas card in the mail because you just made my life a lot easier. Now, second and goal from the eight makes things a little bit tougher here for the Tigers. We got a couple tight ends here in this set. It's St. James, but Zach Cunningham is right there. Third and goal now coming up from the six-yard line. Again, just going to try to lock in here and play good zone defense. Can we do it? That's the question. It's going to be Stoyer. He's denied on the one-yard line. Oh, my God, this defense, man. Now, please, just, well, actually, just please take the field goal. Please take the field goal. You're not going to take the field goal. Why are you not taking the field goal? I mean, I don't want you to score now either, but... I don't want to get another drive from the one yard line. Come on now. We're going 60 out jacks. Blitz. <laughs> okay. There's no way 
There's no way that we allow the Tigers to get back-to-back -back safeties because we're starting again from the one-yard line. Yeah, I mean, we got to go gun here. Now we got Melvin Gordon, but this also might be... Yep, it's Valdez Scantling. Give me some room. Give me a block. Ooh, 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 ooh. One man to beat, and that could have been like a 99-yard house call. And uh, But that's good, though. You know, that's good. Getting us into... Getting us a little bit of breathing room here. We are down to our third string running back as well. So very curious to see how this thing is going to play out. Can we get some good blockers at least for Melvin Gordon? I mean, I'll take it. Gain of eight for the veteran out of Wisconsin. That's a little better. Now let's uh, have a long methodical drive here. We get the ball after halftime as well. So let's come out uh, a little bit of play action. And ooh, Zay Jones huh? is open, but love inaccurate. Boy, I really hope that they are blitzing because if they are... We could have Thomas or it's Seals Jones. It's Seals Jones. Catch that, Ricky. My God, man. It's because my team is so decimated by injuries. I'm down to like my freaking fourth string people. Because I'll tell you what, if Darren Waller was playing, he's the starter. So that would have been Logan Thomas, not Ricky Seals Jones. And Logan Thomas probably would have held on to that ball. Big hit coming from Verrett. Ooh, nice. Okay. KJ Hamler, way to absorb that hit. 3-2 ball game. Who's going to score next? That's the million-dollar question. Our defense has been playing really good. I will say that. They have been playing really good in this one. And now, a little dime blitz action seems like a good idea. Although, um, Christian Watson might be uncovered. I don't really like that. But maybe if the pressure gets home fast enough, it won't matter. And that is... Again, Dalton Kincaid. Look, if you're going to pick up a first down, at least let me see my man St. James or Nick Stoyer get it. I'm about to just cut Dalton Kincaid from this team because I'm sick of calling his name. But it was a good play nonetheless, so um, I will give him that. Fresh set of downs here for Tua. It's going to be Josh Jacobs trying to run him down from the back with Yaya Diaby. That's never a good idea. Two-minute warning he is a very close here. Got to find a world where we can maybe double dip, whether it's a field goal, touchdown, you know, after halftime. But either they score quick here or don't or don't score at all, kick a field goal, whatever. But got to find a world where we can maybe try to get that double dip going. That would be awesome. And you know what? I'm going pressure. I'm sending some pressure at Tua. I don't care. And it's almost home. Michael Pierce almost drilled him back into next week. Tua was able to throw it away. And on third and seven here, I think, me thinks, that we just play good lockdown man coverage. And also, I have LaMarcus Joyner kind of spy in the middle of the field a little bit because we know that Tua, oh, it's a pick from Winfield. Winfield has a little bit of room to roam too. If you like defensive football, welcome to the San Juan Tigers at the Toronto Thunderbirds. This one has been defense, defense, defense all the way. Just want to get some points before halftime, man. Let's go screen to Melvin Gordon. We got pressure instantly, but also got some nice blocks as well. Melvin Gordon going to get out of bounds. If we got to go dink and dunk game here, you know, and you know what? Look, the coach is actually calling it again screen, but let's actually flip it. I don't want them to clue in too much on you know the adaptive ai or whatever so let's go ahead and switch the play up oh that time they were ready for it not gonna call a timeout here yet but jordan love only at 61 yards Ooh, ah, i caught a play wait i said ooh ah ooh ah okay i did not mean to call a play there um but now we just gotta roll with the punches and this could be a corner shot oh oh ah, they could have hang on should have had that one Receivers are dropping balls today. Are we ever going to be able to convert a third and long? That is the question. Valdez Scantling might be the man to do it, and it's another early breakup. Dude, I don't know what is going on with our receivers here. I mean, okay, that one was definitely more contested, but, like, it's just been so many drop balls in this game. Olave dropping them. Seals Jones dropping them. Like, the only... The only position the only guys on our squad that's getting anything done is the running backs and it's mostly on screens and check downs and stuff like that yeah three two fun one exciting but you know what i actually like 
defensive uh, games like this. So many times in Madden, you see like, you know, freaking 44 to 38 scores. Unrealistic stuff. So 3-2, it's, it's kind of a nice change of pace. I'll be honest with you. It's kind of a nice change of pace. So what is Tua going to do here? Only 28 seconds. So he's got to do something and got to do something fast. That's going to be a check down to Jacobs. He does get it and gets out of bounds too. Wow. We're going to send some heat here. Zach Cunningham, can you get in the backfield? Kind of mistimed it there, but Cunningham was close enough. And I'll tell you what. We should have about three sacks in this game, I feel like, because the pressure has gotten there, but only so far one sack, I think, right, that we have to, to show for it. So it's all right, though. It's better than no sacks. And second and 10 here, two are coming out. Shotgun, we'll see where he wants to go. It's inaccurate, and we might get the ball back again because both of these offenses are struggling. One of the stranger halves of football that I've played in Madden, 3-2 is the score. And, uh, I mean, San Juan Tigers kind of getting it done with the pass yards here. We get a look at some of the games around the league. Always good to see the SFL teams live and in action here. And took me a long time to relocate everybody, too. That was no easy task. But here coming out of the locker room, we got to get something done with the pass game, man. So I'm going to throw it deep. And then as far as our defense, I don't really want to touch anything with the passing necessarily. So let's just go defend inside run. Try to stop Josh Jacobs. All right, getting the ball to start here out of the locker room. Let's please just make something happen. That is literally all I'm asking for. Zay Jones, there we go. He had such a big game against the Brooklyn Nighthawks. Him and Adam Thielen went back and forth for like, I think Zay Jones had 180. Adam Thielen might have had like 150 or something like that. But that is like the best play that we've seen all game. Easily hands down and we're going to continue to try to uh get this passing game going here a little check down to steals jones but the pressure is right there that was raekwon davis the defensive tackle he was able to get in the backfield in a hurry didn't think this defensive line was really going to be that good but they are playing pretty good in this one here wide open is steals jones but love what is going on with Love, man? He is usually so accurate. We had Steels Jones wide open there and just couldn't get him. I mean, this game, gold, darn it. Shouldn't be this tough, right? But it is. Kyle Juszczyk, I need you to block for me, please, and thank you. Now, please catch that. Did he drop that too? I mean, my receivers just, I mean, you guys see it. My receivers just cannot haul in passes today. Like, I don't know what else to do, but we've got, we got about at least five drops. That's not going to be a very good punt. I don't think. Nope. It's going to be a touchback. And is anybody going to score in this game? Anybody at this point? No, never mind. Not going to say it. Not even going to say it. I was going to say, I'll even see the San Juan Tigers score. But no, I don't want to do that. Let's bring out our dime package here. Let's press up on the receivers, please. And just hopefully play some good defense. Oh, how about uh, offensive pass interference, maybe? Could that be a thing from Quentin Johnston? I mean, he pushed off on the receivers as I saw it. Tigers got the ball close to midfield now. They're going to give it to Josh Jacobs. Oh, my God. He just threw my guy aside with reckless abandon. And there, that's why I didn't want to say it. Not going to say it. Not going to say it. Not going to say it. That's why I didn't want to say it, man. That's why I didn't want to say I'll even see the San Juan Tigers score at this point. And they are going to go for two to make this a seven-point game here. Let's see if we can prevent... That from happening, maybe Yaya Diaby gets back here in a hurry. Not 100% sure. Let's see if he does. Nope. Two-point conversion is good. And now we got some work to do. Here comes Melvin Gordon out of pistol. Nice blocks. Okay. Oh, Melvin Gordon running strong. He's still got some gas in that tank there. He's been in the league for nine years, and he showed his veteran Vision there, picking up a first down. We'll try Gordon here on the draw. He has some decent blockers. Gordon running good. Gordon is running good. He's breaking some tackles out there. 
which, you know, it's all you can really ask for. And I feel like we just go to him again, right, out of inside zone here. Let's see if that is the right decision after all. Let's ID up Nick Bolton as the mic. I don't like what he's doing out there necessarily. And Gordon running with good vision. Continuing. This is our best drive so far of the game. And it's all because of Melvin Gordon. What? This is a time where I think we do go for a shot play. Maybe what? Zay Jones on the cross, which I kind of like. Zay catches it and thank you. Now we're starting to see some offense here in the second half. Took us two full quarters of football to get a touchdown. And now both teams get one. We got a chance to tie this thing up here with Jay Tuck and make it a ball game once again. 10-10 on the scoreboard. Now let's see what our defense has in store for the Tigers offense. Josh Jacobs, though, got to find a way to slow him down. He has been a problem today. Eight rushes for over 100 yards. Um, yeah, that is not going to get it done. And uh, got to watch him now. We did make defending the inside run. Our focus so got to make sure we watch Josh Jacobs on the outside which it's exactly what it's gonna be DJ Reed there but Josh Jacobs is running good and he is now at 114 yards on nine carries Two are coming out tight formation here would love to see somebody get in the backfield here like maybe Yaya Diaby that would be nice inaccurate ball by two both these quarterbacks man they must have been out partying last night they must have a bit of a hangover here because they are not playing the best football, either one of them. And Bobby Wagner here, no, it's Euser on Diaby, and it's going to be Josh Jacobs again. Can't wrap him up. We finally do. And a big third and three here. We really need to force a punt here, guys. I think I'm going to come out in zone and audible to pressure. That seems like a great idea to me. And I am going to have Brandon Graham over here. We got Jacobs. Yes. Good call. Good call. They should punt it. No way they go for it here, right? Yeah. Okay. But got to watch the fake, though. Teams have been known to fake me in these in this series here. I don't think this one is going to be a fake. It's not. Dixon is going to shank it. Oh, not a good punt there from him. Eh. I guess it's okay. Going out of bounds at the 17. I think that we're going to streak Olave. If Justin Simmons, man, please blitz, Justin. Please. Well, he didn't blitz, but I still kind of like it. And Olave catches it. Yes, Olave, finally. He has not done hardly anything in this season. And that was all the play wreck here of your boy. Olave, very curious season. He does not have hardly any receptions at all but the the receptions that he does have i feel like 60 percent of them are touchdowns i mean no joke i'm actually probably gonna go check that because he's gotten a couple deep bomb touchdowns a couple you know goal line wide stick touchdowns but that was easily his best score his best catch of the whole entire season and now we go up by seven offensive explosion coming out of the locker room when in the first half, we couldn't do diddly squat, but I'm here for it. Now we just got to continue to play good defense. Josh Jacobs does got his X factor on, though. That is not good. And yep. Oh, please don't break that tackle. Wow. Okay. He's going to be a problem. We came out blitz, but we're going to go ahead and audible into zone. And it's, yep, Jacobs again. He's brought down there by Antoine Winfield, but doesn't matter. He is literally putting the team on his back on this drive. Didn't really mean to come out in man, but uh, kind of stuck now. So see if maybe Leonard Floyd or somebody can get in the backfield. No, it is. Oh, trying to hit Dalton Kincaid. That's why you bring in St. James, buddy. I know he would have hung on to that pass, right? Got linebackers in the A gaps here, but we are dropping back into coverage. And good thing that we did it is going to be a passing play, but. He has Devontae Smith open on the drag. Didn't really pick up too much, though. And now a big third down. So what do we do here? Man coverage, blitz. Uh, nickel blitz seems like a good idea. We're going to press up the line here a little bit. And you know what? I'm also going to have probably, yeah, another defender. Nick Stoyer is wide open there, 87 on the outside. So got to watch him. That should be a holding. Should That's got to be a holding. It couldn't be anything else but holding. Go ahead and bring that thing back. Thank you, ref. It is holding. 
Uh, that is good. It's Coleman Shelton. And that's going to make it third and 15. Just got to guess pass here and play good lockdown coverage. Third and 15, hopefully we can get them off of the field. One would at least pray that that would happen. Where's Tua going to go? He, he really can't run. I mean, what is that? Like, at that point, just run. <laughs> and set yourself up for a better field goal. Like, at least you could pick up, what, four, four or five yards? Two is a pretty good scrambler. He just said, screw it. I'm going to throw it out of bounds. So the Tigers answer with the field goal. 17-14. We're locked in here for a fun and exciting fourth quarter finish. Mike Oxmall might actually be my first read. Uh, nope. Kyle Juszczyk. Please hang on to that. He does. But still one yard short. And... I mean, we got to go something inside zone, right, with Melvin Gordon or maybe, yeah, I mean, inside zone, I don't like any of these plays the coach is, is calling up, by the way. Don't like any of them at all, so I guess we're going to go I form here, not really the, uh, the thing I wanted to do, but Gordon, did he get it? Barely, barely, barely by a short and curly. Forward progress, though, does have the first down. All right, fresh set of downs here. First and 10. Let's just uh, score here. Put a bow on this thing. Valda Scantling tiptoeing on the sidelines. Jordan Love now starting to put it together and putting it together in the most crucial, crucial point of the game when it's crunch time because if we score here, boy, I will sure feel confident about this game. But if we don't or only score a field goal, eh, not so much. Let's see if Melvin Gordon can pick up something on the outside. Tell you what, he's uh, he's he's breaking tackle. Look at that. Pushing the pile. I mean, what? Forget Kyron Williams. Forget Kareem Hunt. Is Melvin Gordon our new running back of the future? I mean, probably not. But he's definitely making the most of his snaps here in this one. And uh, Kyle Juszczyk now going to be getting some snaps himself. Juszczyk can definitely run. Everybody knows about his game. Best fullback in the league. He picks up seven, and we get this thing down to the 24-yard line. I mean, I don't like, okay, so if you're looking for, like, you know, full-on franchise gameplay going through every little thing, the free agents, the prospects, all that, St. Louis Sentinels franchise is the series for you. I don't really do that too much in this series. I mean, I, like, I will off camera, right? But this is more so about the subscribers. And, you know, I don't really have time to be going through all the full franchise stuff. But if you're looking for something like that, you will like the St. Louis Sentinels con the franchise, my other series. Go check that out. I do all the franchise stuff that you could possibly imagine. Melvin Gordon's just freaking somersaulting out here. Levels concept here, but you know what? I am audibling it inside zone to you check because... There should be a nice hole there. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, Drew Sanders got off his block pretty much instantly. He has been wreaking some havoc back there. And now here on third and goal, I mean, I don't know. We're going to go try dagger play maybe. I mean, it's probably, probably not the best play to call, but maybe Logan Thomas gets open. If Nick Bolton blitzes, which he is not going to, that's going to be a pick. Should have been a pick. Trying to find Olave for his second touchdown. And we are unfortunately going to settle for a field goal here. So leaving the door cracked open for the Tigers. There is a nice, nice breeze blowing in here. Four and a half minutes. Let's just get a nice interception, forced fumble, something like that. And get out of here with a very strange, odd victory. Now the good news is even if they score, right, which it's me. It's Madden. I'm sure they will. Even if they score, it'll only be tied. But that's good defense there. Finally, finally getting something positive done to Josh Jacobs. We'll see if uh, Tua decides to continue to go to Josh Jacobs. He did not. He tried to hit Devontae Smith. Third and 10. Tigers are at risk of going three and out on this one. I mean, they're coming out four wide receivers here. So we got to play some good defense. I saw a man wide open and Bobby Wagner's there. And with this much time left, you got to punt, right? Yeah, okay. Great defense by the T-Birds. I was going to say, they got all timeouts, so, like, definitely can't go for it. If, if they had no timeouts or something like that, or it was about, you know, a minute 
or so uh, deeper into the fourth, they probably would have flirted with the idea of going for it. But now nah, you can't in that one. And now if we can just grind this clock out, hopefully, preferably with Melvin Gordon or Kyle Juszczyk, whatever, I'll take either one of them. If we could just grind this clock out, force the Tigers to use all of their timeouts, we should be able to get out of this thing with a win. And look at the best fullback of the business doing what the best fullback in the business does, picking up first downs. Come on, Melvin, take us home. Take us to the promised land. It's a good start. Obviously, the Tigers, yes, are going to use their timeouts, but one first down ends it. And you know what? You know what? I typically like to go with uh, coach suggestions. I would say about 80-something percent of the time. But this, I mean, this just screams screen pass. And you know what? If we don't get it, it's going to be unfortunate because we will allow them to not have to use a timeout. But screen pass just seems like the best option for me. So let's hopefully pick this up. with. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Melvin Gordon, we're not going to. Wow. But. We did force the Tigers to use a timeout, so that's good. But man, oh man, I, I just felt so go. good about screen in that situation. I really did. AJ Cole going to punt this thing back. Guess I should have ran it, but, you know, hindsight's 2020. Janoris Jenkins couldn't down that ball. One timeout, 80 yards to go, and all they can do is force overtime because they would not go for two. Let's freaking get this thing done. We got to make sure to, uh, to guard these edges. We don't, whatever we do, we do, we do not want to let the Tigers get out of bounds. So if we can just patrol the edges, have some good, uh, you know, staunch Bruh. D. Is that a run? Oh, my God, a run to Josh Jacobs. Are you kidding me? Wow. If that would have been a play fake, Tua would have got drilled. But it was, I cannot believe they actually ran that ball. I cannot believe they ran that ball. All right, come on, guys. Come on, T-Birds. Let's get to Tua. It's going to be Jacobs, man. This one's getting a little too close for comfort. I got to be honest with you. And they're taking like virtually no time off of the clock either. I might call a timeout. Oh, that could be it. Wow. Okay. Check and mate. But they did leave a lot of time. A lot of time. And all we have to do is get in field goal range. That's all we have to do. And even if we don't, as long as we don't throw a boneheaded pick or something like that, we would at least force overtime. All right, come on, T-Birds. Got some crossers here. Need a little bit of protection. Zay Jones is open. Please hang on to that. Somehow he does. Wow. Zay Jones had no business holding on to that ball. Coach wants us to run. This took a lot of time off of the clock, too. Might, I mean, we got Justin Tucker, yes, but got to call a timeout here, man. We got to get, I'm not really confident from the 45-yard line. I should have called a timeout that first time, but I didn't. And got to dial up something good here. We got two timeouts. It'd be about a 60-yarder from here. So I'm just thinking, like, screen pass should be good. Oh, my God, dude. All we're going to do is lose yardage. Is this really going to overtime right now? I mean, now it'd be a 66. Wow. What can I draw up? It's, it's got to be fast, too. It's got to be so fast. I don't know about this, man. I mean, Justin Tucker is a beast. Yes. But uh, six seconds. We got to just do something so quick, so quick. And oh, my God, I sold. As long as we don't. Throw a boneheaded pick or something like that. Do not let whoever that is. Okay. Wow. Overtime it is. Awesome. Okay. Uh, this game ended up being actually really exciting. It was kind of a snooze fest at first. But here we go. Overtime. Uh, San Juan Tigers get to call. We won the toss. We'll go ahead and receive. And hopefully we could just drive down the field, score a touchdown, put this thing to bed. Come on, Pat Pete. I'm going to actually return this ball with you. I don't typically do that, and that's why. May as well just let it so hard, at least for me. I mean, maybe it's just a me thing. I wouldn't be surprised if it is just a me thing. 
but it's just hard for me to return kicks. I never do a good job at it. So here we go, guys. If we go down and score a touchdown, this one is over. Let's see if we can do just that. As long as we don't throw a boneheaded pick or something like that. Oh, there you go. That is ball game. That didn't last long. Wow. So Jordan Love, two interceptions in this game. And the San Juan Tigers are going to get the victory. Okay. So we have now dropped two in a row. Very, very depressing. Heartbreaking. Jordan Love had been pretty clean, but now two touchdowns, two picks. Tua, one touchdown, one pick. I mean, both quarterbacks, like, they had the yardage, I guess. But here's the problem. This is literally what lost us the game. Josh Jacobs, 172 yards. But how about Melvin Gordon? Shout out to him. We don't know what's going to be going on with Kareem Hunt. So Melvin Gordon did step in and actually played really good. Zay Jones continues his dominance. Christian Watson played great. Chris Olave had one reception, but for 71 yards and a touchdown. That's pretty awesome. Nick Stoyer, two catches for 21. And St. James, two for six. So, I mean, at least the subscribers did get semi-involved, I guess. Uh, we had one sack from Leonard Floyd, Tavon Young, and Justin, Justin Simmons. Game ceiling pick six there. But Antoine Winfield did have one as well. And checking on where is our cornerback subscriber, Dior Love. He had six tackles. No picks, no sacks, no force fumbles, but some pretty key tackles in that one. Take a look at our subscriber stats here for week eight. Virginia Beach Blues did get the victory over the Houston Oilers. They are playing great. Should be about six and one. Josh Allen had three touchdowns. That's good to see. But got to check on my man, Easy Fuentes. He had... Four catches for 27 yards. No touchdowns in the game, but I believe, yes, the Virginia Beach Blues are the best team record-wise here in the SFL. OKC Antlers did get the dub over the St. Louis Bulls here. So checking on the stats of cornerback C. Ben. We'll see what type of impact he had on the game. He had six tackles, just like Dior Love in our game. No interceptions, nothing like that, but... I think the Antlers might, they might be a one or a two loss team as well. Sacramento Sentinels get the loss to the San Antonio Voyagers. And we got a subscriber QB on this team, Rocky DiBernardo. His team did get the loss, but they, he did everything in his power, man. 330 through the air, three touchdowns and one pick. Lamar Jackson though, I mean, he's Lamar Jackson. He's former MVP. His teams typically win, but Rocky, he was slinging the ball to Jamison Crowder and Travis Kelsey, McCall Hardman, a couple former Chiefs there. So good game from Rocky, even though his boys did get the L. Paris Black Knights and the two brother subscribers on this team get a nice victory there. So Jaden Hayes, the quarterback, 194, one touchdowns and two picks. So not the best game, assuming that it was carried. Yeah, Kenneth Walker, he uh, completely asserted his dominance, but his brother, Caleb Hayes, no touchdowns, but a very, very good game. Six receptions for 71 yards. And most important stat, they got the dub. Brooklyn Nighthawks in our division dropped to the Dreadnoughts. Couple subscribers here on both of these teams. So quarterback Derek Daragosa, who just beat us last week. Uh, I mean, three interceptions. You never like to see that. We just threw two, so I don't have much room to talk. 214 also through the air. And checking on the receiving stats of Alexander Klublek. Two receptions, 23 yards, no touchdowns. But again, most important stat, his team got the dub. Ooh, Orlando Orbits lost a close one by one. And the Orlando Orbits got a couple subscribers on their team. So first taking a look at the rushing stats of Johnny Waters. He continues to play good. 18 attempts for 81 yards, almost average five yards per carry. No touchdowns either. And we also have Cora free safety, Flash Parker. He had three tackles, no interceptions, nothing like that. Could have used one of those as they just lost a very close one. But good to see the subscribers getting involved for some of these other teams. The Dublin Shamrocks couldn't keep their win streak going. They had won two in a row previously. And uh, checking on the stats of it was a... Shootout here, it looks like, from Trevor Lawrence and Jesse Buzo Jr. Trevor Lawrence, almost 400, wow. But Jesse Buzo, 248, 
three touchdowns to only one pick. So he did play really good. And he got Gabe Davis involved a lot. Debo Samuel also as well. And some other guys down there too. Honolulu Dragons take a four-point defeat to the Columbus Caps. And we got to check on, of course, cannot forget about our only punter in the SFL. So if anybody's a kicker out there, a punter, I'm recruiting you to the SFL. Jack played pretty good. He had four punts. He had one inside the 20 along a 52 averaging 46.3 net yards so so decent you know nothing crazy but uh, unfortunately looks like he was called upon a lot in that game and that's probably why the dragons lost oh my god the team that we just added two subscribers to today right the salt lake city bisons absolutely obliterated the albuquerque armadillos and there is mason buchanan debut game in the sfl 266 yards and three touchdowns wow wow and running back nico pd also did pretty good three touchdowns wait a minute whoa whoa i'm sorry he did he did amazing only averaged 2.9 yards per carry a lot of attempts but remember their other running back is hurt and three touchdowns okay I see you out here. Now, I got to check on some of the Armadillo stats here. Bjorn Jeffrey, tight end, five receptions for 37 yards. And also, who else do they got? Now, I'm trying to think. They also got Arturo Esquivel as well. So, we'll check on the linebacker stats from Esquivel. Only three tackles, nothing too crazy. Definitely could have used a lot more out of him. Lumberjacks pulled out a narrow defeat against the Mounties, and that is not good for us because they are in our division as well. QB Michael Yakin here. Only 197, one pick. So I'm, again, assuming it's probably a lot of rushing. I mean, kind of. It was dispersed around between a lot of players. Montgomery did play really good. And we also got to check on James Briner. One reception for 12 yards. But again, I can't say it enough. Most important stat is they did get a plus one in the win column. Canton Condors finally got in the win column too. Man, oh man, they were struggling as of late. And they beat Patrick Mahomes. Jared Goff beat Patrick Mahomes. Nice. Love to see that. And Braden Keys was the big reason why they won. Four receptions, 103 yards, and a touchdown. One of the better performances I've seen from a subscriber player in this league. And then also the Condors got, Condors got two defenders as well. So we had Eli Sokowitz with four tackles. And we also had Mike Collins with four tackles. But he had a forced fumble. And it looks like he also recovered his own fumble as well. His own forced fumble as well. So shout out to... The Canton Condors, you guys played great. Good to see you back in the win column. And finishing off things here, the Oakland Wizards blowout victory against the Anchorage Snowhawks. We have a subscriber defender on there. Dak Prescott didn't even play that good either. So taking a look and seeing what uh, my man Michael Briner did here. He had six tackles, but three tackles for loss and a half of a sack. I think last week he did not really have any stats at all. So what a bounce back game from Briner, the rookie out of North Carolina, getting in the backfield and causing absolute havoc. Well, that was a interesting episode and we take on the Canton Condors next week who have three subscribers on that team. And you see, they just got a big, big victory. So they are going to be playing on a little bit of a hot streak, we'll say. So Hope you guys enjoy, guys enjoy this episode. That is going to do it for me tonight. But as always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.